born again? Is God with you? Same Holy Spirit. How God anointed you with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then go about doing good and healing all who are sick and oppressed of the devil. For God is with you. Welcome everybody to Wisdom for Life. We are in that season. It is Passover, or what many people like to call it, Easter weekend. And the message that we are about to watch today is a message that my dad brought on the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the power that came with it and is available to us today. You're gonna love it. Please enjoy. Praise God, open your Bible, Revelation 21. Revelation 21 verse 6, Jesus said to me, it is done. Say, it is done. It is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. Listen, I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. Remember, Jesus had an encounter with that woman at the well. And they started discussing religion. And he said, if you could get the water I have, you'll never thirst again. And what was he talking about? He said, the time will come, and now is, when God seeks those who would worship Him in spirit and in truth. Not worship in religious ritual. Not worship because it has to be done because of the way the denomination does it. It's worshiping from your inner man, from the spirit worshiping in your heavenly language, worshiping that's whom the Father seeks. For He is spirit. And those who worship Him must worship in spirit. He is that living water. When you drink from His water, you'll never thirst again. And he who overcomes shall inherit all things. I will be His God and he shall be my son. The demonstration of resurrection life of Jesus alive today is that your life is transformed. If I could explain, if I, if I told people what my life looks like, things that happen in my life, and anybody can explain all of that away. They could say, well, that happens, and then if you do this, you honor. If you go and apply for a job, you, you'll get one. If you do this, that, that. If you can explain your life, everything that happens in your life, and, and it's all the flesh, then who is God? Then it's just religion. Then it's just the process of action. But when you encounter a situation where it's been written off by man, when they say, this is impossible, you need to know this is the last few months of your life. You, this is at the end. This is now we're coming. We're taking away. You, this, you'll never be the same again. And then you know that God gets a hold of you where your family may have written you off. People may have written you off. A whole government may have written you off. It doesn't matter what has happened. When you have an encounter with a living Christ, the change happens inside. And then it manifests in a way that no one can explain it, you know you've had an encounter with a living Christ. He is your life. He is your life. Resurrection life. Drug addicts can go and spend months at a rehabilitation facility and then come out and go right back. But when someone has an encounter with Jesus, that desire is removed forever. Total healing, total transformation. 
when you sit down with the world and a world system, now I'm, not, I'm not negating anything because I, I thank God sometimes we need what's there because <laughs> if it wasn't for faith, people don't have faith, they would have died. You, know, you, you need to have the natural help sometimes if someone hasn't reached out to Christ. But when they force you to sit in a room with other alcoholics, and your opening statement is, Hi, my name's Joe Soap, and I am an alcoholic. Say what? You're getting them to confess that every single time? Reinforcing what Satan's put in them? Ah! Oh. When you have an encounter with God, that which caused the alcoholism is destroyed at its root and are totally taken out of you in such power where an alcoholic can't even go into a bar or look at a, he can't even smell alcohol, but you'll be able to stare that thing down and say, no, I am redeemed from the inside. I don't need the false. I don't need the counterfeit. I have the living wine inside of me. I have the new wine of Christ. That's the resurrection life we're talking about here. Resurrection authority. Where God gives you what you need. He is your God. This is exactly what Jesus demonstrated when he walked on the earth. John chapter 5 verse 19, Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son, everyone say Son. Remember, you've overcome he is your God. You are his. You're his son. You're his daughter. Okay? So the son of God. If I stopped someone in the street and I said, who's the son of God? What do you think they would say? Jesus. Which is correct. How many people would say, I am? Who's the son of God? I am. Now, I'm not the son I'm a son. There's many of us. But if you ask, who's the son of God? You're looking at one. <gasps> you see, that's what they wanted to stone Jesus for. That was, they called, they called that blasphemy. And you go read that account when he said that he calls God his father. They wanted to stone him because by saying that, you were saying you are equal with God. Ooh. <laughs> Someone sucked the air out of the room. You see, we, we're nervous with that kind of statement. I didn't say I'm God. But I've been put on the same level. I'm not one of the heirs. I'm not a sub-heir. I'm not, uh, you know, Jesus is the heir and I get something. We are called co-heirs. Seated in Christ, in heavenly place. In other words, wherever Jesus sits, you are sitting at the right hand of the Father. It is other than the Father who is supreme authority, the highest place of authority after the Father is at his right hand. The highest place of authority is at his right hand. The word says you are seated with him in heavenly places, not just near him or the next seat down. You are in Christ. You understand your position. I want to read that with that in mind. Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself. But what he sees the Father do, for whatever he does... The Son also does in like manner, for the Father loves the Son and shows him all things he himself does, and he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. So the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. Now, you see, there are those that would get nervous with what I encouraged you. No, oh, hang on, hang on, this is Jesus. This is Jesus. How can you say, and me? There's some things that are just Jesus. I'm glad you brought that up. 
How about we ask Jesus? If you can't accept what I say, would you accept Jesus? Would you, how will you be okay with what he says? Are you okay with his opinion? Only five, six, seven hands. Otherwise, why are we sitting here? What, it's like Paul said, if he's not raised, then, then, our, then it's futile. We, now, if you're not going to say, I believe the words of Jesus, then why are we here? How do you believe the words of Jesus? Amen. Come and look at chapter 14. Verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, had you known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. You've seen him. Philip says, Lord, show us the Father then. And then it's okay. If you say we've seen him, then, then point him out. And Jesus said, have you been with me so long, and yet you've not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. He who has seen me has seen the Father. He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak of my own authority. He's referring back to what he said in chapter 5. I don't do this by my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. I love the terminology Jesus chose here. We talk about miracles. He says it's an everyday job. For God, it's not a miracle. This is what we do. This is how we roll. The Father does the works. The Father does the works. Verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Now most assuredly, now, family, just a Bible study tip. When the one who just said, I am the truth, says, now, listen, believe me. Verily, verily. Or he says, truly, truly. It's like when people say, can I be honest with you? I always like to say, what have you been up till now? <laughs> weren't, weren't we being honest all the time? But that's what I'm saying. When Jesus says, verily, truly, most assuredly, every word should be most assured. Every word is true. Every word is yes and amen. But if he says most assuredly, for me, that's a little alarm bell. What he's about to say, I might have said, if it didn't come out the mouth of Jesus, I might have said, I can't see that. But it's coming out of his mouth. So he's giving you a heads up. I'm about to say something that your natural mind is going to check you on. But I want you ready. Have the gate wide open. So what I tell you, you hear with your spirit. The works that I do. If you believe in me. The works that I do. You will do also. In fact, greater works than these he will do because I go to my father. How can you say that, Jesus? Because back in chapter 5, he said that God, the only reason I do what I do is because I watch the father and the father told me he'll reveal greater works to me. But when Jesus looks at you, he doesn't see him and you. He sees you and him as him and you and you and him as one. Him and you, you and him. If he speaks about himself, he's talking about you. And so if the Father said, I'm going to show you greater works, oh, you must mean all my brothers and sisters. He doesn't see you different. So if Father told me I'm going to do greater works, it means you're also going to. Not greater miracles, greater works. It's going to be your everyday life. A miracle is called a miracle because we didn't expect it. 
oh, it's a miracle. Why are you calling it a miracle? Because it shouldn't have happened. Where's your mind? Weren't you expecting that? See, if I'm expecting it, I don't. when the sun comes up tomorrow, I go, oh, the miracle. The sun came up. I'm not going to be shocked by that. It's supposed to happen. The sun's supposed to come up. The river's supposed to flow. The bird's supposed to fly. Uh, things are supposed to happen. The sick are supposed to be healed. The, you, you know, the, your, your debt's supposed to be paid. Uh, the, when you lay hands, they're supposed to get better. When you declare prophecy, it's supposed to come to pass. <laughs> So I don't rejoice when it happens. I rejoice because I'm spoken. You've been designed for great works. It's built into you. See, Joseph, under the old covenant, knew this. Everywhere he goes. Walks into the house of Potiphar. What happens? The Lord blessed him for Joseph's sake. <laughs> yeah. You've got success built into you. I said, you have success built into you. I want to hear those that believe that. It says you, greater works than you will do than he... Than Greater works than these you will do because I go to the Father. Because I go to the Father. Because I go to my Father. Because I am resurrected. Because of the resurrection, you will do this. Well, there's only one question left then. Has Jesus gone to the Father? That qualifies that scripture. So, whatever you ask in my name, I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. <laughs> yeah. Family, I want us to be so comfortable with living the miraculous life that it's no longer miraculous. It's your everyday way of life. Get used to the fact that when you've spoken, it's going to happen. You shouldn't, want, shouldn't speak and then see if it works. No, you speak expecting. You speak expecting. Now, if that is the case, then we're going to do it every day. We're not even going to think twice about it. I'm not gonna, you, you notice whenever Jesus spoke, when anyone came to him and said, Lord, open my eyes that I can see, or, you know, I don't have a man for the pool and... You know, I don't know, if I can just touch his garment, Jesus didn't say, hang on, let's first find out what the Father wants to do here. Father, you know, if it's your will, then heal this person. Well, let's just see now. Okay, it couldn't have been his will. Jesus just, he just spoke. What he wanted, he said. When he said to the blind man, what do you want? The man said that I can see. He didn't say, oh, come on, <laughs> you're born with that. It was something else maybe. What do you want? He said that I can see. Okay, it's done. So he had that authority, understood it. He knew the Father's heart. He believed the Father's heart. That's why I said if you can believe that what you say happens, you have what you say. How many believe that? Then you'll be speaking over your bank accounts. You will be telling your house, come now, it's time. We need to move in. Yeah, I'm done with renting. I want... I'm ready to move in to my house. I, I want my car now. I, 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 amen. I'm done with buses and taxis and, and, and hitchhiking. No, I, me, me car. How many believe you have a car? Then call it. I'm not putting up with this, with this hurt anymore in my body. I'm telling it you get out. This is now I, I am healed and I'm walking in the life and the healing of God. you designed for success. Hallelujah. You've seen God move. You saw it tonight. Power moving because he was believed. Praise demonstrates belief. You don't praise something you don't believe is there. But when you know he's alive, you praise. And in that midst of praise, 
that power goes to move. Get out of your mind this thing that, yeah, but he's Jesus. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Why would Jesus need anointing if he's God? Does the Father need anointing? <laughs> he is. He's the source of anointing. Hello, he is the anointing. So how do you anoint the anointing with the anointing? God must anoint himself every day. No, no, when you anoint. no he is the anointing. So Jesus is. Before he came in flesh as Jesus, he is the word. He is the word. Whatever he said is. He is the way, the truth, the life. That's why we don't argue with him. Well, I just don't see it that way. You know, it's a modern world today and that was written back. No, no, this is eternity book. It was only recorded in history, but it's existed all of eternity. You want to know what truth is. People say, what is truth? Truth is relative. No, no, he is the truth. Why? He designed it. He is the life. And so as God, he is the word. But when he came to the earth, he emptied himself of that. He emptied himself of that power. Otherwise, why would he need the anointing? But God did anoint him. The Father anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with Power. What had happened? He went about doing miracles. It's not what it says. He went about doing good. And healed all who were sick and oppressed with the devil, by the devil. For God was with him. Are you born again? Is God with you? Same Holy Spirit? How God anointed you? with the Holy Spirit and with power, then go about doing good and healing all who are sick and oppressed of the devil. For God is with you. Come on, give Jesus praise. You believe that tonight? Every head bowed, every eye closed. As Christians begin to pray and intercede. When you encounter a living God, the only response would be the way Saul did when he was made it a purpose in his life to be a part of persecuting Christians. In fact, involved in some of their executions. But when he encountered Christ, his response at that encounter was, yes, Lord. He immediately gave his life to Jesus. When you encounter the living God, that's the only response. And God loves you tonight. No matter what you've been through, no matter what has happened, you've had an encounter with a living God in this place. And some of us may have come from a religious background like I did. Some may come from a point of view of they don't really care if there's a God or not. Maybe you were even an atheist. But tonight you're saying, I want to know this God. I want to be born again. If you're saying, God, please save me. The word says you believe with your heart that Jesus is raised from the dead and you confess with your mouth that he's Lord and Savior. You will be saved. And I want to lead you in that prayer tonight. All of us are going to pray out loud together. But if you say tonight, that is me. I want to give my life to Jesus. Say this. You need to hear yourself speaking. Say this. Dear Jesus, thank you. You died for me. And you gave your life so that I could have life. And then you rose from the dead. Today you are alive. I believe that. I call you my Lord. You are my Savior. From this day on, I live for you to serve and worship you. One day, I will leave this earth and stand in front of you and see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You're born again a child of God. Now, here's the thing. 
we got something we want to give you to take home. It's going to help build and develop your faith, something to listen to. It's a free gift when we're done here. There's people waiting. They'll get that to you immediately. But let me just say this. There's a principle you're going to learn about if you don't know it yet, and that is the principle of first fruit. It's a form of offering that when you receive something, you're going to always honor God first and then enjoy the rest. You've just received eternal life. Are you happy? Are you blessed that somebody brought you to be here, that you came to learn and hear that he's your Lord and Savior? Then as a first fruit offering, can you tell somebody else, a friend, somebody else, that they need Jesus, and you bring them next week? And that'll be an offering to God. Say, thank you for my salvation. Yes, has somebody else. Amen. You're going to do that? Praise God. Tell me we can all do that. Amen. How many want to see revival? Many souls saved. And let's bring people. Father, we thank you so much for your precious life. As we go today, we rejoice knowing that you never leave us nor forsake us. You've given angels charge to ensure our safety. You said no evil befalls us. No plague comes near our dwelling. And so I believe each and every person travels safely to their destination. I call your family blessed. And thank you that we walk in this resurrection authority. That as we decree and declare your word, others will see things that seem miraculous. But for us, it's every day. And they'll be drawn to know you and join us in lifting up your name, declaring Jesus is Lord. Love your family. Have a great week. God bless you. Our Easter weekend is coming up. And on this special weekend, we will be taking the time to reflect on the awesome price that Jesus paid for us on the cross. We will also be getting together to celebrate what Jesus accomplished when He laid down His life and what His victory over the enemy means to us as children of God. So bring your family and friends and join us this Easter weekend celebration.